Good morning, everybody. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Caleb Miller, and I've had the opportunity and uh, the fortunate opportunity over the fa past few months to be able to talk to you guys a few times. Um, and I've just been excited to get to know you guys, get to meet you guys, and uh, kind of kind of follow along your journey. I feel like I've I've gotten to see and um, as your as your pastor search and everything that's gone on in the past few months. And I'm really excited for you guys. I'm really excited for what you guys are doing, um, the opportunities that are being placed in front of you. Um, and I want to take a little bit of time this morning. First off, I got to apologize to Lisa. I don't know if Lisa's here somewhere. I didn't. I haven't seen her yet this morning. I'm sure she is. Um, I got to apologize to Lisa because when she messaged me and asked me what I was talking about this week. I had to like not respond right away because I had one of those weeks, you can raise your hands, you've ever had like those weeks you just struggle? Those weeks, yeah, yep. So there's two honest people. Um, no, we have those weeks, right, that we struggle. And I had one of those weeks. It was just a tough week. It was a week that, that the world was coming in around me and I was focused on that and not what God was talking to me about. And I, I started the week with this plan of saying, this is what I want to talk to First Baptist Church about. This is what I want to do. And about Wednesday, when Lisa messaged me, God said, nope, 180, we're going to go this way. So I had to like delay responding to her today because I had to like flip everything around. So I have to apologize to Lisa. But I hope because of this, because God has put this on my heart, that we can take this this morning and be encouraged and be excited, and know even that when we're struggling, even during tough times, God is with us. And before I read my scripture verse this morning, I just want you guys to know this, this verse, um, more specifically, not just 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 8, but 2 Timothy 4, 7, is maybe one of the verses I use in my own life whenever times are tough, whenever I question something, whenever I am in need. And we're going to go through it today, but, but this is something that really pertains to me, and it's a verse that stuck out to me my whole life, and, and kind of one, especially as my walk with Jesus, as my walk with God has, has progressed, has been something I can really stand on. It's been a firm foundation of my faith. But I want to start this morning by reading the scripture of, of 2 Timothy 4, uh, verses 1 through 8. And if you have your Bibles, you are welcome to, to follow along. I'm going to warn you this morning, I got a lot of scripture verses. So if you can't read them up here, please follow along in your Bible. You're not going to offend me if you're looking down, looking through your Bible. It's encouraged. So 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 8. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but have itching ears they will acclimate for themselves, teaching to suit their own passions, and will turn away from listening to the truth and the wander-offs into myths. As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, and I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all those who have loved his appearing. This is the word of the Lord. Okay, so before I dive into this, if you guys have been here when I, when I have preached before, I like, to, I like to get everybody's attention before we start. And so, um, kind of a, a tradition at my home church is we do a meme of the day. Some of you are like, what's the meme of the day? It's kind of a funny picture with a saying, but we're going we're gonna to kick it off with the meme of the day. It has nothing to do with what I'm talking about, but I just thought it was really funny. So the meme of the day is Bo Boaz's favorite pickup line was, before I met you, I was ruthless. So, I thought that was really good. So, But if anyone's married to a Ruth, you could have used this. I don't know. So like I said, our, our scripture reading this morning came from, from 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 8. Um, and specifically today, I want to focus on verse 7. We're going to break down verse 7 as it's written, written there. And as I have fought the good fight, 
I have finished the race, and I have kept the faith. And depending on what translation of the Bible you might, that last verse might say, I have remained faithful. I have fought, I have finished, and I was faithful. Like I told you guys, I have, I've had a tough week. And we all struggle sometimes. This is the verse I lean on when I struggle. This is one of the verses that props me up when I've, when I've looked away and not looked at where God's telling me to go. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, and I have kept the faith. So what does the Bible say? What does the Bible say about how we have fought? How do you struggle? What do we struggle with? Everybody struggles a little different. What does the Bible say about the good fight? I can sit up here and I can tell you what the Bible says, or, like right now, we're going to take a minute, I'm going to read you three verses with specifically what the Bible says. The Bible says this in Luke 10, 19, Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. Romans 8, 28 says, And now... And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. Romans 5, 3 through 4 says, Not only that, but we rejoice in our suffering, knowing that suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, and character produces hope. We have all been empowered by God to tread over the power of the enemy. Whether we know it or not. God has called us to fight when the world tears him down. It's going to be a struggle. It's going to be tough. This is one of my favorite lines to my youth group kids back in Ignite and Sioux Rapids, but you show me the Bible verse where it says following Jesus will be easy, and I said, I will give you a huge candy bar. It doesn't exist. Nowhere does it say that having faith and following Jesus is going to be an easy road. In fact, it says the opposite. It says we will struggle. We will fall short. We can't fight the fight alone. Jesus did not go to the cross and conquer death so maybe we can rely on him sometimes. No, it's an all-in, all-out. We need to rely on Jesus all the time. I have a really cool personal story I want to share with you guys this morning about what it means to fight the good fight. I uh, attended Iowa State University. I think I've told you guys that a few times. Um, But while I was at Iowa State, I was actually interning uh, as a youth pastor uh, at uh, Christ Community Church in Ames. Well, at this church as an intern, uh, I was making zero dollars. It was a volunteer internship. But I went to my my professors and I went to my advisor at Iowa State and I asked, hey, I'm doing this thing for about 15 to 20 hours a week. Is there any way I can get some college credit towards an internship? And so my advisor immediately said, here is the number and you can set up an appointment with the religion department at Iowa State. So I went, got my appointment set up, I walked into the religion department at Iowa State and I will tell you what guys, the world is dark. Because I walked in there and they laughed at me. They said, you're doing what? You're interning at a church? We don't care about that. If you want to go in there and pretend like you're doing it and disprove Christianity, you can do that. And it caught me off guard. So much like I walked out of there speechless. And the cool thing is God had put someone in my life. I went back to my advisor and I said, I I can't do this. I can't do what they're asking me to do. And he looked at me and he's like, you know what, Caleb, we're going to figure this out. And so, and he was a good guy, loved Jesus, called up three or four different departments, called the the political science department, called the sociology department, finally got someone that would give me an internship for sociology, the study of human behavior. That's what I got an internship with at the church. But they didn't ask me to try and disprove my faith. We live in a dark world, a world that is looking to tear down God at every step. 
a world that is looking for you to get pulled away from Jesus. That is what Satan uses, guys. That is his, his best tool, is diverting us away from what God wants us to do. He wants to tear us down. We have to fight the good fight, even in the struggles, even when it's tough. Matthew 5, 16 says, In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that you may see good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. In the fight, we're called to be a light. Don't let yourself be dim when you are in certain places. Don't hide God from the world. We're called to stand out. And we live in a world that's a lot easier to just fall in line. We live in a world that's a lot easier to, to stay in your place, to be okay with the status quo. I have another story I want to share with you. I had a professor. I actually got a degree from Iowa State in history. Um, I love history. I was actually going to become a history teacher until God called me to be more into ministry and do that kind of stuff. And I had a history professor. Um, I love Roman history, specifically times that, that focused around um, the, the spread and, and of Christianity in history. And I had a religious professor that stood up there one time, and he told me, the Bible contradicts itself in every manner. And he continued to say things like that till some of the people who I knew through other church events got up out of the room and walked out crying. And it finally got to the point, God put it on my heart, and it, and it sunk, and it sunk, and I was, I was getting sick to my stomach, and I finally stood up and I said, please tell me where it says that in the Bible. And this professor looked at me, he's like, well, I don't have my Bible here this morning. And it just so happened, I was going to a Bible study that night, I pulled mine out of my backpack, set it on the table, probably too hard. And I said, I got mine right here. Tell me where to look it up. He couldn't give it to me. Sometimes we got to fight the tough fight. That guy wasn't controlling my grade. Luckily, he didn't know my name from the other 500 students in there. But sometimes we got to stand up for what we believe in. Sometimes we have to be okay being uncomfortable. First Baptist Church, what I want you guys to understand is from this first part, from fighting the good fight, are you okay being uncomfortable? Are you okay in that moment when God's calling you out of your comfort zone? It's easy to sit in here and love Jesus. It's not as easy when we're out there. What does that look like? Are we okay being uncomfortable? In 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 3, One through three, excuse me. We have to prepare for whatever comes our way. We live in the time where people don't assume sound teaching. The fastest growing religion in the U.S. is atheism and agnosticism. The belief that God doesn't exist or I don't know what exists. The world is broken. Our fight continues. I wanted to point out those two spots in, one, in for 2 Timothy 1 through 4. Preach the word, be ready in season and out of season. There's no off season. My sports kids in here, there's no, there's no time off when it comes to Jesus. There's no time off. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but the itching ears will acclimate to their, uh, themselves, teaching to suit their own passions. We're there, guys. We choose things that we want over God. It's happening now. The second part um, of this is is finishing the race. So I fought the good fight, and I have finished the race. What's the Bible say about finishing the race? Acts 20.24 says, But I do not account my life of any value, nor as, as precious to myself, if only I may finish my course, or finish my race, and the ministry that I receive from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. Matthew 24, 13, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. 2 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27 says, Do you know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but ours is imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air. But I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. 
I'm not going to lie to you this morning, church. God made this verse when he was thinking of me. I am not a runner. (laughs) Actually, I despise running. I'm married to a cross-country coach. This is a race of endurance. This is a race that is is not a sprint. It's more like a cross-country meet. You got to understand how to run the race. There's times the race will be easy. There will be times the ground is smooth. There will be times that when we are running, we will have our breath. Usually for me, that's about the first three minutes. We'll be okay. Then there will be times it's hard. There will be times we're climbing an uphill. There will be times where we think we can't go on. Where we think this is an impossible thing to finish. An impassable thing to finish. But we must endure. Every single one of those verses in Acts, in Matthew, in 1 Corinthians, that we must endure. We must train our bodies in 1 Corinthians. I always use the joke with my youth group kids, um, whenever we're playing a game when we're running, and they ask me, you know, like, Caleb, are you going to play with us? I said, I honestly, I don't run anymore unless the bear is really, really large. And in all honesty, guys, like, it's a fun joke, but, but in our life, when we're thinking about endurance, when we're thinking about what God's calling us to do, are we enduring? Are we stepping off? quitting the race at times when it gets hard. 1 Corinthians 9, we exercise self-control. I think I highlighted that there. Yeah, we exercise self-control. Discipline my body and keep it under control. Our wreath, our laurel at the end of the race is not some finite object. Surprise, surprise, every time I finished a race, I never got the gold star or the first place. We usually got something, right, even if it was participation. Ours isn't finite in heaven. When we finish the race, it's not something that gets thrown in a box and we see it every 20 years when we clean out the closet. This object is eternal life with Jesus. If we endure and we we finish the race, we see it through, we see, we fight, we struggle, we complete what God puts in front of us. At the end of the race, we'll have eternal life with Jesus. The race doesn't look the same for any two people. We don't all get on at the same time. Our journey to follow God is all a little different. We're all unique. Some of us take a harder path than others. Some of us struggle more. But the cool part is, in the race to know who Jesus is, the race to be with Jesus, the finish is all the same. We all can really... All can be first place. We all can have that gift of eternal life with Jesus in heaven. First Baptist Church, we have a risen Savior. Jesus not only died for our sins, but he conquered death and rose from the grave. When I look back at my own life, when I look at my struggles, when I look at the times... And, I, and I've just told you the stories that, that I stood up, but there's, there's just as many stories of where I backed down where I struggled to stand up for what I believed in. And when I, when I reach heaven, when I know when I finish the race the way God intended me, I want to be able to say I fought for Jesus the way he fought for me. I want to be able to say I endured when the race was tough. It's a question I ask myself, especially when I'm struggling. I told you I had a tough week, and it was, and I struggled. Am I enduring the way Jesus wants me to? Am I fighting the way Jesus wants me to? My third and final uh, part of this is, is keeping the faith. What's the Bible say about keeping the faith? Jude 1, 20 and 21 says this, But you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God waiting for the mercy of your Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. Hebrews, oh, sorry, I must skip that one. John 3.16, I hope everyone knows this one. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. 
I would make a hard, strong bet that we've all heard that verse a time or two, whether in Sunday school. But if we actually think through it, whoever believes in him, whoever keeps the faith, shall have eternal life. And the final verse I wanted to share with you this morning, I actually switched it up on myself just a couple nights ago. But um, I was talking to Pastor Tyler a little bit, and he said about a year ago, you guys talked through this, Hebrews 11, um, and the full chapter is about 40 verses. And I encourage you, actually my challenge to you guys after church today is go read Hebrews 11, 1 through 40. And to give you the quick rundown, it is essentially a, a quick note study of all the people in the Old Testament that kept the faith. But I'm just going to read you the beginning and the end of it right now. Hebrews 1, 11, 1 through 3 says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction, conviction of things not seen. For by it the people of old received their commendation. By faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. And 32 through 34 says, and this is at the end of the chapter, says, And what more shall I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, or David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, were made strong out of weakness, became mighty in the war, put foreign armies to flight. We serve a God, if we keep the faith, he can do anything. That's a very short list of the many things God has done. If God can use them, he can use us. What does it look like to keep the faith? What does it look like in your own life? If we turn inward, if we take a moment to think about what God's done in our life. And when you guys read through Hebrews 11, you're going to see all that you're going to see. It's going to talk about Abraham. It's going to talk about Noah. It's going to talk about every single one of these guys in the Old Testament that kept the faith, that because they were faithful, God used them in amazing ways. What's that look like in your life? How is God going to use you to keep the faith? If you're fighting the fight, if you're enduring, and you remain steadfast in who God wants you to be, He's going to use you. I promise you, he's going to use you. How do we keep the faith in Spencer, Iowa? We are assured through faith that Jesus died on the cross for each and every one of us. Like I said before, in Hebrews 11, it it lists the many deeds performed by God's faithful servants. How will God empower you here? First Baptist Church, how will he empower you here? Because I would encourage you, it starts here, but the end of this race isn't in here. We've got to keep the faith out there. What does that look like? I have a few things I want to encourage you with here today before I close up. And I have a few questions slash challenges I'm going to leave you with. Because I don't know the next time I'll get to speak to you. But I want to encourage you. You guys have a new pastor coming in a little over a month. Praise Jesus, that's awesome. You're starting a new relationship with someone who you've chose to lead your church. And what I want to say to you is, these three pieces, if you are fighting the good fight, if you have finished the race, or you're enduring the race, and you remain steadfast, if you remain faithful... Tim's job up here will be easy. If you guys are doing what God is calling to you to do, each and every one of you, it's not Tim's job, it's not my job, it's not who's ever up here's job to do that for you. I'm encouraging you to fight that fight the way Jesus asked you to. We're all supposed to be disciple makers. We're all supposed to be people that go out and spread the word of Jesus. Be a light. Be someone in your workplace. Be someone in your school. Be someone in your, in, at Hy-Vee when you're having breakfast. Wherever it's at, be a light. Be who Jesus called you to be.
Use 2 Timothy 4.7. Use it as your guide, just like I use it in times I struggle. It was a tough week, guys. It was a tough week for me. And I had to. I had to sit down and I say, I say, God, what am I doing? I'm treading water. And he just kept saying to me, fight the good fight. Finish the race. Keep the faith. Fight, finish, faithful. I want to challenge you with these three questions, or excuse me, four questions. I wasn't a math major. How do you keep the faith in Spencer, Iowa? How are you keeping the faith in your own communities? Have you answered the call that God has put in front of you? When you're a professor, when that person stands up and directly interferes you with your God, are you willing to stand up and take that challenge? Are you fighting the fight that God calls you to do? That fight doesn't look the same for everybody. Hopefully it's not a physical fight. But what God might be calling you to do is, is invite that person to church. Spend time in that person's home. Open your own Bible. Maybe it's a personal fight, a struggle within, whatever that looks like. And fourth, are you racing and enduring towards the same goal? Not everybody has the same journey. Not everybody has the same time they get on the race. Not everybody's at the same part of the race. Some of us are on the uphill. Some of us are on the downhill. Some of us are on the side breathing hard. But we're all in the same race, guys. We all are moving towards the goal that, that Jesus has for us. And that's life with him. And when I finish that race, I want to be able to say, these were my brothers and sisters, and we finished that race together. We were able to do what you called us to do. We were able to spread the word of Jesus. And I want to encourage you with that, because we're all, we're all working towards the same goal. It doesn't matter if you're sitting here or in Sioux Rapids or wherever we're at. We serve the same Jesus, the same God, and we're all working towards the same goal to bring the light of God wherever we're at. And I want to encourage you with that. Fight the good fight, finish the race, and remain faithful. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for the community of First Baptist Church. Thank you for uh, just an awesome time this morning that we yeah, we just, get to, we just get to do life together. We get to do time where we, this fellowship, this time of, of, of inward thinking, this time of, of getting in your word, Lord. I, I love to use multiple scripture verses when I'm thinking about you, when I'm preaching about you, Lord, to understand what you've done in my life and what you can do in others' lives. And as we leave here today, I just want to encourage everybody that, that if they're struggling, if times are hard, they're not alone. We all have up and downs. And you gave us such a, such a moment in 2 Timothy, Lord, to, to be encouraged with that when you called us to fight the good fight, finish the race, and remain faithful. And we pray this in your name. Amen. Let's sing one more time. But...